It's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. Okay. How come? Yeah. How do you feel about that claim? I'm going to say it being proven out. Thank you. Okay. Right now, Did something. Out of curiosity? Yes. Uh, okay, I'll tap out that one. Sorry, Pardon? Bro. I'll tap out that one then. Sorry, okay, bro. I'm going to cut it then. Or we can blow you out. Huh? No, no, it's good. I'll, I'll leave you to it. I'm sure you can get a conversation. No, 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 don't, no, I don't care. Don't worry, don't worry. What are we doing? Anyway. Huh? I appreciate it though anyway. No, no, let, let, me give you, let me give you evidence for my claim. And if you want, we can blow you out or we, can, we won't even put it on that. Which no, one do you prefer? It, uh, too much tinfoil hat. Sorry, huh? bro. Too much of a tinfoil hat. Sorry, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Okay, let's do this then. So, I don't understand what you said. Too much tinfoil hat. Uh, yeah. Too much fear of data on this whole stuff. Okay. So. Let, me, let me at least back up my claim and then I'll let you go. How about that? Want to, yeah. So basically, the claim is it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator because um, you, it's not proof. There's no evidence, or there's no no one can give me an example of something coming from nothing. So the alternative for my claim is something coming from nothing. Sure. So it's the lack of evidence of one side doesn't mm. negate the evidence of the other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now. On my side, I have a. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I have a book that's been perfectly preserved, which is the Quran. Yeah, it talks about science, gets it right. Talks about history, gets it right. You know, if you Google um, Birmingham manuscript and Quran, we have in a university in Birmingham a carbon dated Quran in the time of the Prophet, so it's been preserved. Now that book talks about everything it talks about, 80% yeah, of it is proven correct. The other 20% is ambiguous, as in you can never prove it wrong or right. So it talks about heaven, hell, it talks about angels and so on and so forth. I'm saying if that 80% has been proven 100% correct, then the other 20% must be correct. If what you can prove either wrong or right is right, then the book is perfect. I mean, uh I guess the, the other side of it would be a part of truth is not whole truth. Pardon? A part of truth is not whole truth, right? It, it makes bold claims, for example. It talks about embryology and gets it right. It talks about science embryology. and gets it right. It talks about history. So, my friend's buzzing me, I don't know if it's If you need to go, you need to go. Yeah. Uh, no, you have to meet me here, so you should be turning up at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> but, can't be missed, though. Huh? Good shirt. Sure. You can't oh, be I missed. Hope so. Yeah, that was yeah. a bam. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, like. I think it's fair to evaluate things that are to be true. I think it's also fair to discuss things that happen. Right? Yeah. And it, it works both ways in terms of like, obviously it adds credibility to something if it's partially true, at least. It's so, not even partially true, if it's fully true. No, but like, if you take the 80% of the thing, right? Yeah. Then we, we know, if, if we say 80%, like, we'll be on this one. Uh, it still doesn't mean the 20% is necessarily correct. I'm not saying it means it's wrong either. Like, that's the no, thing, no, it's ambiguous. Like you yeah, said. it's ambiguous. Yeah. And that's why you get the, the discussion. Yeah. But the way I look at it is, if you, wouldn't it be more logical and rational to say that 20% is correct because what you can prove to be incorrect has been proven, all of it has been proved to be correct. No problem, my bro. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, my brother. Right. I wouldn't say it's more rational. I disagree with that. But, on, uh, why? I, I, think it, it's, uh, I don't think it's more or less. I think we can make a decision. Mm. Like, I think... Like, it gets tough because it's like you're, you're dealing in like versions of grey, right? And so if you want to like draw that line on what's acceptable or not, it's getting a bit flippant, right? It's like it's like sports players who believe at some level, you know, obviously they're trained hard to do what they're good at. They've got the skill, they've got the work in, and they're good at that thing to some degree. But then they also believe that kissing a pitch and a ritual on the way in on the pitch does something for them. And at some level it might do, right? Either like psychologically or whatever else, it might actually work. But in reality, can you prove that that's true? Well, it's not. Some players then don't do that, and they're fine. And so it's always the, it could have, it might not be, I don't know. Let, let me re clarify what I meant. What is objectively true, and what can be proven objectively proved correct, has been proven correct. So now... Sure, totally. So you're definitely ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. So how can something that makes these claims, and you can't find out, like, 
you're never gonna. The, there's one way to find out if heaven exists or hell exists. You know what I mean? As in die? Or? Yeah. yeah like, when yeah. you get there. The, the problem is you can't get back from it, though, right? That, that, that <laughs> is the problem. You know what I mean? One-way trip. <laughs> so, what can be objectively proven to be correct has been proven correct. So when we're talking about things which are subjective, right? Um, like the Quran, what makes it, I feel like, not the Quran, this Islam as a whole, what makes it stand out is the fact that we have something that's objectively true in the Quran that can be tangibly tested. Doesn't make sense. That's the miracle of it, that it's, it's physically here. The claims it makes, when it talks about prophecies in the Quran and gets it right, to me, that's like mind blowing. When it talks about, um, Science gets it right. It talks about history, things that it shouldn't know. It was 1400 years ago that we've only recently found out due to um, translating like Egyptian writing and so on and so forth. Like, like, you're not writing the pictures, you know, um, hieroglyphs and so on and so forth. Right? Yeah, it's all good. You know, um, then to me, it makes it seem like, look, this is divinely inspired. So going back to my initial claim, that it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. As a recap, it's like no one can claim the universe created itself. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah? So, and then nothing comes from nothing. Is that not a rational statement? Is that not a logical statement? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah? Right. So, the universe came from something that's powerful and has intellect, intelligence that create the universe. There's too much design for there not to be a designer. Because I'm speaking to an agnostic, does that make sense? So you don't negate the existence of God. Totally, you, you don't yeah. negate it, but I don't think... No, that. you don't negate it. So I know who I'm speaking oh, no. to. I appreciate yeah. the fact that you're not like a hard atheist. You know what I mean? That's an open to idea. Yeah. So now, based on what I've said, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, my viewing religion, bearing in mind, obviously my background, like, what is your background? Multiple religions. God bless. Cheers, bro. Bouncing around, this place yeah. I've grown up anyway. It's not being one. Where did you grow up? Don't mind my screen. There he is. Look at him. See, so he's got a few strands too. It's lovely. Yeah. No, it's so my friends at uni. I have quite a few of my friends there. Uh, okay. So, yeah. But otherwise, it's Church of England. Uh, it's Belarus. Hey, huh? How are you doing, my friend? He got there in the end. How are you good? What's, What's your name, by the way? Mattia. Mattia. Ridwan. And your name? It's John. John. John, so I've just, just met John, randomly approached him in conversation while he was waiting for you. Like, like how, how come? What, what is the market? Is there a market today? No, um, it's there all the time. Uh, so every Friday night there's a market. No, no, no. Every day. <laughs> but I'm sure one day a week it's not around. But yeah, I'm, not, I'm not really from this area, so I can't really say. See, as you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. But I think they're closing it. This, the market is good though. Yeah, it is good. The, the market is good. And there is some places with some nice food. I think the one with the red tent with yeah. the Afghan food. Exactly. Yeah. Good value for money, you get good quality food as well. I am a big fan of Lahore Kebab House. <laughs> How is it? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been to Lahore? Yeah, Lahore, yeah, yeah. The no, not the specific one, but I've been to other places. So, okay. okay. Tayabs? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Pasan? No, 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 no. He likes us a lot, so he's moving through. Yeah, but I like La Lahore is my favorite one. Cheap, uh, good, is it? fun. Where is it? Huh? Lahore. No, it's the other. It's a white chapel road. Is this is this is this sponsored? Yeah. Huh? Oh. <laughs> are you are you sponsored by Lahore? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Give this man discounts, yeah. all right? <laughs> Every time you go there, just show them the video and they'll be like, yeah. I don't want to take your time though, anyway. There's no, no, there's no there's people that will probably benefit more than I will. It, it's not even that. The fact of the matter is, I think you have benefited because at least I think I've given you some yeah. food for no, food and. Yeah. I don't know, introduce you to Quran and we're, we're giving out free Qurans. I know you're out this today, but we're here every Fridays. So when you have a chance and you pass it through, feel free to pick up a Quran. I actually already have a small one. <laughs> uh, What's prevented uh, you from reading it? Oh, I've read parts of it. What just, did you think? I kind of like the just I read, but uh, again, I haven't spent enough time to make any real comment. Okay. I would say that, look, um, generally people will procrastinate. Does make sense? So if this creator that I'm telling you revealed this perfect book and warns of um, consequences for a certain lifestyle and a reward for a certain lifestyle. And like at the end, there's nothing in the Quran uh, that's forbidden, which is bad for you. And nothing, so then if we submit our will to the creator, the one who's created the one Lord, 
yeah, who has no partners, who's self-sustaining, who's eternal, who doesn't have offspring, nor was he born, there's nothing comparable to him, then that's, who, that's how we're going to get attain happiness. But if we live and think like, okay, I'm going to live through my subjective experiences and decide what's right and wrong and make mistakes in the way and like maybe make some life-changing mistake, mistakes that I can't change, that's going to change my life. I mean, that I can't take back. So I'm saying that it's best to kind of submit our will to the Creator. How do you feel about that? Well, at least get to know the Creator, you know what I mean? And then see if that Creator is worthy to be submitted to. Because we're submitting to something, does not make sense? When you work, you're submitting to your manager. When you went through your education system, does it make sense? You're going, you have to um, maintain that timetable. Like some people, they're submitting and they're worshipping their wives or money or girls or girlfriend or whatever. Yeah? And I'm saying, I want to free you from the shackles of this world and come to the obedience of the one who created us. Especially when there's good reason to believe in a creator rather than to disbelieve in a creator. Yeah. I mean, I think like, uh, like we started with, uh, and there's some aspects of it I disagree on, like in this, this abstract piece. But no, I mean, I agree generally. So you, like, you agree or disagree with? Disagree with some of this. Like, now so, tell me, tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I feel bad for my friend though. It's, it's, Do you uh, mind this conversation, no, sir? No, it's very interesting. I didn't know the conversation was so deep because we were actually going for, for food, so that's why yeah. so, that was so yeah. much. Yeah. You just probably be like, yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> And, uh, but I understand the conversation actually got very deep and this is really interesting, interesting teaching. Like when I was a kid and my family was sending me to church, I had to go to church every every week. And uh, I think, I think uh, I'm not really a practical Christian, but I think uh, Christianity and uh, Islam have a lot in common. They're like single God religion, have yes, a lot of sharing and teaching in common. So yes, what you sir. say like definitely like like really resembles a lot of all the teachings I received. I think nowadays I sort of lost my spirituality. Where, where like, are you right now? I was just about to ask that, like, do you believe in a creator? No, not really. I find it more and more difficult. I believe that everything is too perfect to be just a product of chaos and uh, randomness. But, uh, the, but that's my argument for a creator. Yeah, I get the point of the creator. Because like, if, that, if there's, there too, much, creator, if there's uh, too much design, because if this isn't random, and someone put there's too much order for there not to be someone all powerful that put it into order. Because what I was saying to you, John, is that my definition of God, of very simplistically, is uniquely one that's all powerful and intelligence that's put this universe into being. Yes, yeah, so the mastermind that created all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about building on that. So yeah, that's a very good point. Do what I mean? We're not, I'm not gonna like big bang theory. I'm not gonna blow up a tree and get a table and chair. Yeah, no. Does it make sense? Like you break like up... Natural evolution, even things like natural evolution, Big Bang, like they can't be product of randomness. No, no, even, even evolution, right? Evolution, yeah. Yeah, no, in fact, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm not even, I'm gonna let you continue that. That's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, let's not open up that kind of voice. Yeah. But the point I was gonna make in regards to evolution, because most people, I don't think you've done it, they will conflate evolution and the universe so they say the universe evolved but most people they don't have a concept of evolution so you need a single-celled organism for something to evolve does it make sense so the point i'm trying to make so we don't go into the rabbit hole in regards to evolution is where did the universe come from put to one side living matter i'm thinking just matter full stop exactly origin of time where is this coming from yeah so i'm saying that come from something that's outside of the universe. Yeah. Does that make sense? Something that's self-sustaining, which is eternal. I, I believe there's something like that, but it goes beyond human comprehension, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Why? Because what you say sounds very nice. The Creator is beyond our comprehension, which I agree with. However, why would God create us Without, without telling us why, without yeah, a purpose. Yeah, that's a very good question, yeah. Does it make sense? Create the entire universe, the planets, the solar system, and just like, do whatever you want. There's no rules, there's no instruction manual. manual. Does it make sense? Do any of you smoke um, vape? Do you vape? There was a gentleman I was speaking to a couple of days ago. He had a vape in his hand. And I said, even your vape comes with an instruction manual. <laughs> <laughs> 
there's not it's not a particularly complex equipment you know what i mean yeah and it's like the probability of the universe is like for this it's like me save my life sir <laughs> it's like me getting a thousand letters right and just throwing it into the air and then um, getting shakespeare's romeo and juliet out of it like at what point are you gonna put your logic to one side and be like no like if i was to say look we're in the desert and you see these marks on the floor you're not gonna say oh, it happened by itself the wind blew a work coincidence you're gonna make someone walk there you find a bowl in the desert the raw material for everything you need for the bowl is there apart from what the design the purpose you're not going to find a bowl and be like, oh my gosh, what are the chances? This took a billion years for the sun to melt it, the wind to blow it, for it to become this bowl. Yeah, but that's a, that's a very hence, point. I said it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. That was very sweet. That's the point on which you very disagree. Yeah. Yeah, so elaborate, sir. Here go. I said it's like too many, it's too many versions of prayer, right? Like I think this is what it comes to. El elaborate. So. What do you mean I by mean, that? Well, I take, uh, take the idea of the bowl. Over there. The bowl, sorry. The bowl. The bowl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have this bowl made of stone. Right? And yeah. It's, yeah, you walk, you come across it. I think to Matthias' point about beyond comprehension. If you go back 500 years ago, there's those things that we thought to be true, which is just. Right? I mean, you could go for the flat like world, which may or may not be an Islam thing, I can't remember. By the way, the Quran says the world is round, so... Well, yeah. at, least you got, at least you know We've that. We've got one thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you see my point, there's a whole bunch of things that have been nailed up not to be the case. And it's because but then, time but, and knowledge... But you can't conflate right? that with Islam. No, no, and okay. using the example of the bowl, like, no, you, haven't, you haven't really... What I'm going for here is that it's like knowledge over time, right? And so your perception of something now is based on knowledge you've attained over that period, which may or may not be based on truths. So if you get on the science route, like evolution is only a theory thinks that it hasn't been disproved, right? The so what, sorry? No one's been able to disprove, like, and maybe that's a hard one to go into, but like, as in generally pick anything in science, if you like quantum do you stuff, know, do you know boson, who, whatever, it's um, all about disproving it, right? And I think that much with the crime, Sorry, do you know who Richard know. Dawkins is? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah? Do you follow his stuff? I know of him. But I don't follow Richard Dawkins. He's a British scientist who goes really hard on the Indian stuff. Yeah. He, he it, teaches in Oxford University. Pretty, uh, insulting things at some point. Yeah. Like, and he's like, like he really he teaches he teaches evolution in Oxford University. And do you know what his concept of where life came from? Google it, please Google it. Aliens. Who made the aliens then? Yeah, there you I mean, go. The, the, next, next question, right? <laughs> yeah. There but you I, go. I guess it's wise beyond, uh, beyond our comprehension. That's, uh, that's why. And I think I'm, I'm going to get there, and I think that's a humble position to hold. But if God wants us to be able to comprehend elements, so for example, the way we comprehend God, Allah, is through the names and attributes. Yeah? Like, I can't comprehend how Allah sees everything, but Allah is all seeing. I can't understand how Allah is the most loving, all loving. I can't understand how Allah is the most just, yeah, the most wise. Does that make sense? Like Allah sees, you see, I see, but Allah sees everything. Do you know what I mean? So there are some things, but that's how we connect with God. But going back to what you were saying in regards to um, these elements we find out to be right and wrong and so on and so forth, right? The point is that like the I'm saying the concept. Right now, the concept that you wouldn't make that logical leap of saying that bowl or those footsteps didn't have a purpose or a creator yeah then that concept because i agree science is evolving yeah there are some things that science said this is 100 percent right the world is flat da, 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 rah, rah, and they're confident about it and then later on it gets disproved I think that's I, kind of, I think all of it will be at some point right? be no, but no, not, not everything some things we have to kind of agree with like you can't get two things which contradict one another. You don't get a round circle. I mean, a square circle. Oh, totally. But then, 
flip side, you also don't agree on the entire truth. You agree on what you understand. So it's, it's a portion of reality. So we go what back to where you started. So, with so let, me, let me just finish my point. Sure. Am I, are you going to remember your point? Oh, hopefully. If not, yeah. I'll, I'll let you finish. I'll no, remember. No, no, go on. If it, yeah. if it's, I don't no, remember it's not that important. So <laughs> <laughs> go on. No, because I feel like we're, we're going on a tangent in regards to um, these elements about half truths and so on and so forth. The point is, there are some things we know to be objectively true. Yeah. So something can't exist and not exist at the same time. Yeah. Our understanding of science develops, but we can't inflate that with conflate that with concepts in regards to um, logic and rationale. Does that make sense? So science, I agree, can change. Yeah. However objective truths and reality like um, logic can't so when we say this is a logical truth like look it can't it can't be true and false at the same time can't be two contradicting things yeah so the same way i'm applying my logic that look the the bowl and the footsteps in the sand yeah something caused it yeah but then i now, think it's the jump between something and naming something and, and that's the conversation I want to have, yeah. rather than using science as a tool. Does that make oh, sense? No. Science, 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 science can tell you when yeah. you have a cake, the chemicals, what the cake is made out of. Yeah. It can't tell you why the cake was made, how it makes you feel, what motivated you to buy a cake for your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, your sister, do you know what I mean? Yeah? No, I agree on that bit. But then I think that's where the disconnect for me comes in. Is that yeah, please, tell me about the disconnect. I won't and attribute it to you know, Allah, to Christ, or to the Jehovah. Like, you know, you can pick one, then. but then I don't attribute, I don't see an argument that's good enough to attribute it to one of those things. So I, don't, I, think to, I would say you're not looking deeply enough. To you, it's not important. You haven't tried to attribute it. If, you, if I asked you right now, where did the universe come from? I'm going to speculate and you're probably like, you've never thought about it, it's not important. I'm saying that's where the urgency to believe in God comes from. I'm not saying, oh, you have to read this, you have to follow what I'm saying, whatever you're going to go hell. The urgency doesn't start from there. It starts from where did the universe come from? Allah says, look, reflect on the creation. Yeah. And you'll make you think that there is a creator. Don't, then we go into the obedience and the laws and why and so on and so forth. Now, where did the universe come from? Oh, supposedly a Big Bang, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, what caused the Big Bang? That's the open question for one of them. I think. There you go. So I'm saying you haven't been asking the right questions all your life with all due respect. Yeah? So. Okay, no, but like maybe respectfully disagree with some of them. I think there's some questions important in terms of theology. But practically speaking, can someone be a good person without knowing? I think they can be. I'm saying you don't have a objective moral anchor to say what good is interesting okay really like, so you, you tell me what's good is rape good is bad is bad yeah how do you know based on what let me finish because this is your um you've been so, so socialized at this time, through your lived experience, is wrong. There are some communities where there's no concept of consent. Men just rape women. Oh. No, totally. I mean, I'm not. So I, I agree with you. I'm saying objectively, God said rape is wrong. But you don't have a moral anchor. You can't say why this is wrong now and it's going to continue being wrong 500 years from now. If everyone, like, you know, Hitler and the Germans, yeah, like Nazis. Nazis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nazis. Yeah, okay. yeah. The Nazis. No, no, no. no. Could be Germans too. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. You need to be articulate. Does it make sense? No, no, no. All Germans were Nazis. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's okay. Let's get the point. Yeah, of course. For so them, then, there's a different concept of morality. At that yeah. point, of course. there was a point where we didn't value black people. Slavery. Yeah, yeah, sure. Does it make sense? Yeah. So that was that was correct. Someone else, and before it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's been, yeah. It's been all over history. I think morality has changed to different standards. I agree. So now. Your morality, you don't have a moral anchor. But what but do you think, like, what do you, like, so I think we are getting, like, we have all the right questions, I believe. Like, what is morality? Who says morality? 
where the world is coming from, where is our consciousness coming from, all these sort of questions. But what do you think the answer is then? Because to me, like these are deep questions that no one really has an answer. Okay. I don't like easy answers. Like I don't like people coming to me like someone two thousand years ago said this and we now we believe in this. You know. I would sense. say, I would reject what you said. Someone came two thousand years ago. A man in the desert came fourteen hundred years ago with this. I'm saying a unlettered, unlettered man fourteen hundred years ago came with a book that talks about topics that that man should hasn't got a clue on. How did they know? And he gets it right. Yeah. So going back to your question in regards to the answers, I would say the pertinent question is what created the universe? Yeah. Because if we say um, and we come to an answer logically and rationally that it's not God, then that's fine. You live your life, got nothing to worry about. But I think we should invest some time to prove, to, to fi figure out, sorry, what created the universe. Because yeah. my claim is it's an all powerful, all knowing um, entity, God Allah, that created the universe. Created it for a reason told us what that reason is through prophets and messengers. The message was the same. That message got lost over time. Send the final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Um, because there's no more messengers to come, God preserved the message through the final revelation, which has been perfectly preserved, the Quran. And that, that tells us, gives us purpose. Because God created us for a purpose uh, and argument, gave us the instruction manual. Your argument is like Muhammad couldn't write all the stuff himself, so God must have told him. No, that's that was the argument though. That's a element of my argument. Oh, my, okay. my first initial argument was the universe didn't come from nothing. Yeah. It didn't make itself. Well, so I mean, something something all powerful must have caused the Big Bang. But, I mean even if you pick the Quran if you say that this is the base anchor that we take all things from. From the, right. from in response to morality, from sure. my narrative, yeah. yeah, from my perspective. How does that differentiate with the schools of Islam? It because doesn't. that's from the same book, right? But the implementation details were quite drastically different. No, same no, no. Christianity too. Like if you take, you know, uh, was it brother of Baptist in America, mm. and you compare that to Baptist down the road, mm. implementations are the same instructions are pretty... I would say you know, there's two elements of that statement. Yeah. First, when it comes to theology, there's no difference of opinion. Yeah? We believe in uniquely powerful, almighty creator. Um, we agree on the names and attributes of God. Does that make sense? Now, there is a scope for interpretation in regards to the laws. Yeah? That flexibility, I would even say is divine. Why? Because it gives you that room for freedom to actually... Because this book was revealed 1400 years ago. Yeah? This book is as relevant then as it is now, and it will be in 1400 years time. Does it make sense? So when it comes to those elements of implementing it, like there are things we just don't disagree with, like praying five times a day, that sure? we worship God alone. Yeah. Now, go on. Because maybe like if you take the perspective of someone who lived in ancient Greece or during the Roman Empire, they believed they knew the truth, but just no one believed in this sort of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. So maybe for them, it was uh, reasonable to think whatever they believed was going to be valuable also in the next 2000 years but actually we don't quite believe in the same thing again anymore. i think like you said you have one powerful god no, no, th this conversation this conversation we're having is quite abstract yeah and what let's ground it in reality yeah in specifics so right now um yes these things used to happen in in history right but what makes the Quran unique, what makes Islam unique is my proof that the universe, like I can't prove God, like I can't prove God exists through physical evidence. Of course, of course, yeah. Because yeah. God is intangible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't use science to prove it. However, use whatever tools you want against the Quran. Because this is the physical uh, manifestation, evidence that God exists. Yeah, so no, now, so tangibly, yeah. like if there's a contradiction in this book, I'll reject Islam. Yeah, yeah. That's not your motivation, but I'm saying that's the bar I hold it to. So I'm being specific. So you tell me what your bar is for you to believe in a creator. Yeah. So logically, rationally, it makes sense. What more do you want? Now, if this book is divinely inspired, 
God is perfect. The message must be perfect. The scripture must be perfect, which this must be perfect. And it must be perfectly preserved. That's my criteria. So I'm saying with an open mind, go through it. Open it up. It's free of charge. Yeah. And then, but before that, what is your criteria? Does that make sense? That's why, like, I think I, like, I think we agree on some things, like this idea of creation. Would you like for me? It's we agree on what, sorry? Uh, on this idea of creation, like someone yeah. that actually Creator, created. Creator, yeah. And also, I agree on the idea that morality is not something that is written within ourselves. It's not something that is really, like... It's nature, not, it's, not it's nature. Not, it's, not, it's not, yeah, exactly. Like, we, we, we set morality on our own standards, so... Exactly. Uh, but I just, I, ju I just believe that so there are questions that are inside the human mind, and people throughout history try to answer in different ways. I just think maybe Quran is not uh, the one I choose to believe in. Maybe it's not even another one. Although we, so we share the same question, you know what I mean? Why? Why not the Quran? If you read the Quran and you said, I'm going to leave it, I'll be like, that's fine. But you haven't read the Do Quran. Do you have a resume? Huh? Like in these little leaf leaflets? Is that like a resume? Sort of shorter version. <laughs> a bluff. A bluff. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think they have a bluff for the crap. No, what is this? Uh, Blurg. Yeah, pamphlet. Yeah. So this one, again, um, the concept of exactly, God. Exactly, you see? This is exactly what yeah. I would ask you yeah. I'm happy to read this one. <laughs> have a read through it. But again, it's not going to tell you anything you disagree with. Because I think fundamentally, we, myself and yourself, we believe in a creator. I think you're more inclined to look into it after this conversation. Yeah, no, like I hope. I said, I'm, no, I'm, still, I'm always open to the idea. No, no, being open to the idea and being proactive. You start the conversation being open. You leave the conversation being open. We're having progress. You start the conversation, you're open. Hopefully, you're enticed and you're motivated to actually curious now. To actually think to yourself that, okay, um, it's important for us to figure out if there is a creator, what you create the universe. Does it make sense? Because at the moment, like you can argue about um, quantum mechanics and the Big Bang and so on and so on. Yeah, someone definitely can. <laughs> I, I have actually. I had this conversation with a professor in quantum mechanics. Really? Yeah. And I've been with you. I'll be honest with you. I don't know how I've done it, yeah? <laughs> And the fact of the matter is, he was very arrogant and pompous and he had this, um, like a hat on, right? Like a cowboy hat. And he's like, look, uh, I'm a heretic and this and that, I don't believe in Christianity. I go, that's fine, I don't believe in Christianity either. I'm a heretic as well, from that narrative, do you know what I mean? Because I think he saw something, I said, um, I'm a Muslim and I love Jesus. So he felt like he's going to go with that. That's, uh, all right. Well, that didn't work here. Yeah? He goes, look, you have faith. I trust, I have hypotheses and so so forth. I asked him a question with a 20 minute back and forth <coughs> where he's saying to me, he can tell me the exact moment the Big Bang happened. I go, that's fine. Yeah. Give me an example of something coming from nothing. This is where he tried bamboozling me. He was talking about black matter and black hole and atoms. I go, it wasn't even time at the time of the Big Bang. No, no, no. So there I said to no him, space. there was nothing. I said to him, that's not nothing. Give me an example of something coming from nothing. And he walked away. <laughs> yeah, there must be something actually. Because he couldn't, he didn't have a response. Because I'm like, so now, hence I've um, redefined my statement that it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator. Because you can't challenge that. Because on the alternative, what do you have? And the fact of the matter is, you haven't thought about it, you haven't refined it, you haven't said that, okay. Because I feel like who anyone who invests in looking into a creator will come to the belief that it didn't happen by accident, there's too much design for there not to be a designer. Once we've established there's a creator, like myself and yourself now, we can move on to level two. <laughs> other questions <laughs> which is which one is right yeah yeah no, that does it make sense yeah, yeah. so it's like okay jesus christ can god become a man would god become a man can and then he goes back to the argument of contradiction how can you be all-knowing all-powerful but then die on the cross 
So Islam rejected. Like, sort of yeah. yeah. And again, you know, Christian philosophers, right? They struggle with the issue of evil. Yeah, the pro yeah, the, the problem with evil. Islam, huh? As the evil situation addressed in, in Islam. That's my point. Very simply, we don't have a problem of evil. I'm happy. I I, I address it all day, every day. Because the fact of the matter is, look, it becomes a struggle when your God is all loving. How can something all loving create evil? Yeah. In Islam, the concept is Allah is all loving, all knowing, all just. So when you see evil, I argue, you see the pixel. Allah, the pixel, Allah is the picture. Does it make sense? From your perspective, and I'm saying that, look, this life is a test. Yeah? And if we go through these so-called um, hardships, like who's to judge? And I'm saying Allah is to judge. So we go through these hardships and think like, why did this happen to me? But if the reward outweighs this, this experience, then I mean, you gentlemen are educated. I can imagine you worked hard to get your degrees and so on and so forth. And, you're, and I'm thinking to myself, wait, how much hardship did you go through? I remember doing all-nighters and I suffered. Does that make sense? My, my mind wasn't working, I was asleep, I was tired, like I had cramps, it's like I was just unwell doing all-nighters. But then um, I forgot about it because when I come out with my degree, it was worth it. Does that make sense? So the fact of the matter is, and even through your day-to-day -day experience where you thought something was bad, why did this happen to me? Later on in life, you're grateful. Like if that didn't happen to me, I, it wouldn't, this wouldn't have happened, that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be where I am. So I'm saying that, look, there's a certain level of humility that comes from believing a creator. Does that make sense? And when Allah defines himself with these attributes, yeah, that God knows everything, that's going to happen. Things that's not going to happen. Those things that didn't happen, if it did happen, what would have happened, makes me think to myself, whoa, like, what I can comprehend makes sense. I'm just going to leave those other stuff which is beyond my comprehension. And that is the element that I think ties in with what you believe. There are some things which are beyond our comprehension. Yeah? Because yeah. at the end of the day, I could tell you logically and rationally um, the benefits of fasting in the month of Ramadan. Yeah? Do you know the benefits? I think, I think, I think that's uh, next level again. Like we went yeah, we're the still, first, yeah, 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 yeah. We're still first level. So no, you're still on level actually, two. You know what? Like, yeah. It was a real pleasure to talk to you. No, no, thank I you think so much. It was a very insightful conversation, a lot of very deep topics. Yeah. But what's think, your, what's your takeaway, sir? I'll let you have the final word. I'll let you have the final word and then I'll let you go. In my, and I'm going to try my best not to speak. <laughs> uh, takeaway of our conversation, yeah. of what you said. I think honestly, there are just some questions that are deep inside the human mind, like where do we come from, all these questions that you cannot disprove with logic, so they must be logical. And that's maybe the quintessence of God within us. What's your takeaways, John? That was pretty rough. Uh, anyway, yeah. like, no, I mean, it's too logical. <laughs> Not too logical. No, no, I'll be honest, I would rebuttal that, but I, I know you want to go, so I'm going to let you go. And I would say, when you've got time, there's other gentlemen here who will probably be able to have a more meaningful conversation with you. They're here every Friday. Um, um, this is a special occasion. I'm just here just today. I'm normally actually in Stratford every Saturday. Nice. But what's your five? Yeah, Saturdays from two o'clock to seven o'clock up there. So we can continue this conversation. Um, if you want to take the Quran or even yourself, I'm going to give you this. Um, what's your final thoughts? And then I'm going to let you go. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a good conversation. I think. You're gonna have a hard time because uh, of the noise. Go on. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. You're on the that. spot now, man. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I think there's things that we disagree on mostly, uh, but I don't it think was it's a disagreement. exactly. I think it is a healthy disagreement. And I think there's stuff at the bottom of it that I'm not arguing against because there's nothing reason to me that I would argue against it with. But I think that we disagree on some basic things about how you ground yourself, what you anchor yourself against, why you anchor yourself against it. I think that's where my difference comes in. I think we need to be continue it. Um, I would, my perception is we haven't disagreed. No. There's things we haven't agreed. Yes. Exactly. We haven't agreed, but we haven't disagreed. <laughs> I think that's an important nuance, but I think this does deserve a part too. So when you gentlemen have time, um, do, do come by. And again, thank you so much.
Take care. Have, have a good meal. Yeah? Take care. Thank you. See you on Saturday, yeah? Oh. Alhamdulillah. No, no, no. Alhamdulillah.